Hi, I'm Brett with StealthNet Labs, and right now I'm going to show you the future of inventory management. If you've got product, you need a fast way to count it and an easy way to list it on your website. If you've ever tried counting your product with one of these, think about how many steps are involved. Scanning data, finding a computer, connecting cables to the computer, running software on the computer, copying scan data to the computer, clearing data on the scanner, uploading the data to your server, and that's not even talking about the cost and maintenance with a device like this. One of these devices can set you back for $700 or more. How many of these can your business afford? And think about replacement costs when you start to have issues with reading barcodes or battery life. These often have issues reading codes well when they're new. So we built a better way. We made an app we call Zap It. Zap, like a laser, as in instantly. That's the way business technology should work. We thought, why spend hundreds of dollars on a glorified calculator when we all carry a pretty good chunk of digital horsepower in our pocket these days? Anything that this can do, your smartphone can do it a lot better, and you've already paid for it. Zapit is a cross-platform app, which means you can run it on your mobile devices or on your laptop and desktop. Almost any off-the-shelf USB or Bluetooth barcode scanner will work with Zapit, and if you don't have one of those handy, you can also use the camera on your phone to read barcodes. How about your e-commerce operations? Does this look familiar? Spending hours on spreadsheets, spending hours behind a camera, and then spending hours matching what's on your spreadsheets to what's on the camera. Putting up listings manually one at a time for hours each day. If you've got a lot of product you're wanting to sell online, it can make this task overwhelming or even impossible. So if you've thought, there's got to be a better way to do this, well that's exactly what we thought. All right, friends, I wanted to show you guys this app. So some of you guys have used this before. We've used it for inventory control, cycle counts, data collection, things like that. But we've massively updated this for e-commerce specifically. And so we took uh, a lot of the function before and added photos and upload and automation to it so that we can put products on a website really, really easily, really streamlined. Let me show you guys kind of how that works here. So. Obviously this app will run on any Android. We're working on bringing it to iPhone. We can also put it on Chromebook, PC, things like that. And what we're gonna do here is go through our guitars. We know we've got some of these on the website. Some of these are not on the website. I wanna show you guys how easy it is to check that. So we'll go in on the app. We're gonna to go to scan barcodes. And then the first thing you'll wanna do is update the web report here. And so you'll hit the update web report there. That basically connects to the point of sales database in the website, and it figures out what's already on the website, what's not already on the website. You'll see why that's so critical. Here we hit photo upload. And what we can do is as we're going through here, we're gonna check every single one of these to see if it's on the website or not. Turn on this barcode scanner. We scan that, it says that's already online. That's already online. Go here, already online. Not on website. So right there, we are able to look at four different guitars and really quickly, very easily narrow it down to, okay, this 12 string tailor is not on the website. We need to take a picture of it. One thing I'll mention, you guys may not have a barcode scanner available. You know, obviously we can get one to you if you need one. Um, but in the meantime, we've got a couple different options. One is to type in the SKU, and so you can actually hit type it in, and then uh, we'll wait for this to time out here. You can actually hit type it in, and then when you hit that, you'll get a keyboard at the bottom, and if we type this in, 211, one, whoops, one, two, five, nine, two, four, zero. You don't want to hit enter there like I did. <laughs> there we go. And then once you hit type it in, it'll tell you the same thing, it needs to be added to the web. And so basically you can type this in and very soon we're gonna have an option where when you hit use camera here, you'll be able to just take a picture of the barcode and it'll automatically scan that. So three different options. You can either use a hardware barcode scanner, which is real fast, real easy, kind of like we saw here. Turn it on, hit this, 
and boom, it's right there. You can manually type it in, which is what we'll be doing in the meantime if you don't have one of these. And then we'll have a use camera button uh, available in the next couple weeks. So what that does that's really critical is normally when you'd have to add stuff to the website, you take pictures and when you start to scale it and look at all of your product that you're trying to get on your website, you'd have to take pictures of everything and figure out which pictures want which with which with which product and you'd have to type it in and you know rename the pictures or make sure they're all organized this does that for you so once you scan the barcode it associates that barcode with this set of photos and then when you upload it to the website this automatically connects to the point of sales database it pulls you know brand model number pricing information inventory etc so we know that we need a picture of this so we're going to grab that Head back to our photo booth and I'll show you guys how that works. All right, so you'll want a good photo booth set up with good adequate lighting if you don't already have that available to use. Assuming you've got a good photo booth, this is really easy. So we we'll want to get this tag scanned here. And normally uh, you could go through and just pull stuff off your floor bring it back and then kind of go through it one by one. So we scan that. We're going to get this tag behind here so that doesn't show up in the photos. And then down here at the bottom, you're going to hit the number one button for first photo. So we'll hit number one and you'll see it's selected. We hit take photo. And our first shot is kind of a nice close-in profile shot. We hit focus here to get that nice and sharp. We hit capture. And it gives you a nice preview of the image you just uh, captured there. So you'll press the image or just press tap on the screen and then hit save here at the bottom. Now we're going to get the second image. So we'll hit two. Then we'll hit take photo. We're going to back up a little bit. Kind of get the full uh, guitar in the image here. We'll hit capture. Same thing. It'll give you a preview just so you know what you just took a picture of. Tap that. Hit save. Now we're going to go to number three. We'll go ahead and flip this around. Get that tag out of the way. You can take the tag obviously off. Do whatever you need to there. Kind of straighten this up a little bit. Then we'll take a third picture here. So we hit take photo. I'm going to go ahead and refocus it. Hit capture. Same thing, you get an image preview. Tap the screen, hit save. So now you've got your three photos and you've got a little preview window where you can go back and look at each photo. If you're happy with what you got, you just hit upload. This will kind of give you a little progress screen that shows you which part of the process it's in. It runs through the uploads and it's going to do it one at a time. So the first photo is done. It's working on the second one here. And then here's the third one. And we'll be updating this real soon as well so that you can kind of see where you are in the, if you've got a multi-photo upload. And then it's done. It'll take you back to the screen that tells you that it's finished. And that's all there is to it. So bottom line, we will get you guys a new copy of the app. I will be getting in contact with you guys um, via workplace to make sure that each, each of us has uh, you know, uh, the latest version of it. You'll get a list of photo of products that you need to tackle. We're going to kind of start with instruments first before we get to accessories. Go get photos of them, upload them, and then we've got automated processes we run from the hub that will push that to the website. That's all there is to it. But of course, if you guys have any questions, drop me a line on Workplace and we'll go from there. Thanks.
Okay, so we're going to try to blaze through the new scanner program. As you'll note, it uh, runs on, on any Android device, uh, as long as it's not like ancient history. We've got it on a tablet here and on a phone. And it can use either a traditional USB connection or a Bluetooth scanner. Which, um, if you go to scan barcodes on the menu, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this question here refers to whether you need to manually enter quantities or have the program assume one. So we just type uh, assume one here. As you can see, when you scan something, it kind of flashes it across the screen as it's picking it up and then puts it in your history there at the bottom. And the history is there just to kind of help you keep, play, uh, keep track of where you are if you're working on a big stack of stuff. This will be kind of a reference of your last five or ten SKUs. And if you run out of space, it just basically moves it all, moves it along uh, off the bottom edge of the screen here. Keeps rolling. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, view edit data. It's really the same as it was before. Just a text editor. And, you know, got a scroll bar and up and down arrows. If you need to use this, you've got to unplug your uh, your USB scanner before it's going to let you edit any text because it thinks this is a keyboard as long as it's plugged in. Uh, ditto with your Bluetooth stuff. You'll need to turn that off. But anyhow, you can either look at it and make sure, okay, yeah, I got those. Or it'll also let you actually edit the text like Notepad or something. Any changes you make, you just hit the save button that says, are you sure you want to save? You hit it again and they'll save it. Upload data, pretty self-explanatory as well. Um, top left is if you want to upload what you've scanned, maybe check it and view edit first. Make sure everything looks good. Hit upload. So when you go to run the upload scan data function there, uh, we actually do a quick binary check on the on the data that's on your tablet and then on the server to make sure that everything got copied exactly right and if something fails for some reason um, you'll get an error message saying what happened so that's a big improvement over what we had before which is it just kind of completes um, scan history is if you need to upload something you've already scanned for any reason uh, probably not going to be necessary uh, now that we've got a more reliable way of copying files but um, it's something we've used occasionally, so I put it there. Same thing with upload from SD card. If you've got a file that you've saved, um, a text file that, uh, that's that got some inventory physical counts in it that you've saved on your device, um, you can copy it from, from the SD card. And then um, the network check is basically a diagnostic to make sure everything's working right. We'll run that real quick. When that runs... Um, and this one's going to fail because I haven't linked this up, but that's that's a good demonstration here. It'll go through and do the various steps that are involved with an upload, and if it doesn't work for some reason, it'll give you a nice little Jolly Roger here with some explanation on what the heck's going on. So it's pretty simple. We'll go through the settings. Um, upload configuration is what we use to get linked up to the server, so that's kind of important. Um, clear scan history if you've you know done a lot of cycle counts and you've got a bazillion files in there in your history you can clear it out with that um, kind of like a web browser I guess backup and restore that's something I'll probably have you guys do just periodically because you can back up the settings on your device so if anything happens to it uh, we can restore it to another device pretty easily you can also back up the history if you want and then the scan and file settings are basically the name settings for the file and like you can see in here, we've just got the date and the time. And you can also change this and put in, you know, a custom word of some sort if you want to, um, like upload or whatever. Date and time should probably be adequate for everybody, um, just because you're going to have on the server the name of the device when you link it up. You set the name um, and then the date and the time of the upload. And that's generally enough to tell when a file was copied. Uh, the comma in the tab setting, not something we'll use right now, but uh, basically is the separator between the SKU and the quantity. 
And if we want to save our changes here, we hit save. If we want to cancel, we hit cancel. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So let's get to the upload configuration. This is the cool part. So on uh, your MSI Sidekick, some of you in operations will start seeing a button that says zap it uplink server on it. And that'll uh, uh, run the server side application for this, which is how we set these up. It's pretty slick. And so what we do uh, to link up a scanner, if you've got a new device or if you need to relink an old device for some reason, what you do is you type in the name of it. So we'll type in Brett Tablet. Actually, before that, I'm going to check and make sure. There we go. I wanted to delete it. I'd already linked it before. So we're going to type in Brett underscore tablet. And if what you're typing in is already taken, it'll say, hey, you know, that name's already used. Come up with something else. That way we don't get things confused. We hit save. And then it's going to ask you where to save it on the server when you go to upload a file. For everybody, this is going to be the C drive, and then the scanner folder, and then your location. And each location is named uh, by its real name. So there's a Fazio's folder, Funky Monkey, Hub, Springfield Music, and Williamson. I'm going to go ahead and set mine up with Hub, and we'll just hit the Select button up here at the top right. And then you're going to see a QR code. Now, some of you guys have the older um, generation tablets, which uh, do not have a camera on them other than the front-facing camera. And it's going to be probably pretty hard to use the front-facing camera for this, so you may need to in enter the data on this page manually, which is pretty easy. It's just got the IP address here that you type in and the form on it on the scanner side looks like this. You just would type this or, or tap this field up here to enter the IP address. And then if you click on view passwords, it'll uh, tell you what uh, server and scanner password to type in for the encryption. And you just do the same over here. As long as this screen matches that screen, you're good to go. Okay, so there's your QR code. We're going to go in here and hit scan QR code. And then just hold it up. So we're taking pictures of what's on the screen there. And it does that automatically. You don't have to press anything. We'll go through and test. And then if it's successful, it'll give you this little message saying QR code link up successful. Click save on here and server to finish the link up. So that's what we're going to do is hit save here. And click save on the server. And uh, what we can do to verify that is go to Upload, Network Check, and now you see that's just humming along. So we're good to go. And we'll go ahead and upload our scan data that we did earlier. And then when that's done, you'll see a finished thing at the bottom along with the back button. So that's really all there is to to linking it up. Um, the only other feature you'll really use on the server is the download settings. Um, in here, you'll see a list of our devices that we've got configured with the server. This is really only handy if you need to rename yours for some reason. Um, when you name the device, that's going to determine what your files names are. So it'll be like device name, underscore, date, underscore, time, or whatever you had set up in the scan file settings on the preferences in here. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it's really easy to set up, really easy to use, and um, I'll be working with you guys over the next couple days to get you trained. This is just kind of a reference video for how-to, um, and that's, uh, that's all I got.